Hi, my name is Peter, and this is Go Verb and Noun. If you've never seen Animal Wonders before, you're really missing out. Jesse Knudsen Castaneda and her husband Agosto run Animal Wonders Incorporated, a nonprofit whose mission is to adopt animals in need, make sure they have a place to live out the rest of their lives comfortably, and use these animals to educate others in their local community. But they also have an online presence. Jesse is the person responsible for bringing animals to SciShow Talk Show. And earlier this year, the folks at DFTBA helped Animal Wonders' own channel go through a reboot, allowing them to help educate people around the world. This week, Jesse's talking to us about rescuing and raising animals, as well as some of the differences between educating online versus educating in person, which at this point we're fairly familiar with. So, let's check it out. My name is Jesse Knutson Castaneda, and I am the director and wildlife educator for Animal Wonders Incorporated. Why did you decide to make a channel for Animal Wonders? I started it um, because I wanted to share the animals with more people than locally. Um, and, and YouTube was just a, a great way to really broaden and I, international. I mean, I, that was the, the whole point. More knowledge. <laughs> What's surprised you about being on YouTube? Well, the very first video we uploaded was called Kemosabi's Tree Fort, and it, it went viral. We have over a million views on it, and it, it was really overwhelming. I didn't, think, I didn't think that would happen, and I didn't think I would be so overwhelmed by it. Um, kind of made me nauseous. <laughs> um, and then we were like, wow, this is, this is actually going to be something, do something. And so we put out another one and it got like 1500 views. <laughs> and then we found like, you know, it's a happy meeting where you get between, you know, 10 and 20,000 views on a video now. Um, and that's a lot more normal. But when, when people started recognizing me that I didn't know, that was also weird. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. And then also I was not expecting to um, be asked to partner with um, Eco Geek with, with Hank Green and uh, work with his community as well. And that was, that was huge. That was, that was really amazing. That I'm glad that happened. So all those things were really unexpected. I really enjoy the feedback. I was, I was expecting the, the commenters on YouTube to be quite nasty. Um, you know, they have a reputation. <laughs> um, the comment section, YouTube comment section definitely has a reputation. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised that our community that we've created is so awesome. I mean, they're just so nice. They're 90% of it is positive feedback or questions about, can you do this? Can you answer this question? And 10% of it is just whatever, you know, just this or there nowhere really on topic. Um, so that was really unexpected that, that that was going to be so pleasant of an experience. And we didn't really have that big of a community before we rebooted. I mean, there was, there were, we had some followers, but they were mostly followers from Facebook. They came over or local people that we'd done shows before for. Yeah, the community that, that happened because of that partnership was, I love them. They're awesome. <laughs> What's it like to make the jump from educating in person to educating on YouTube? That was hard. Um, I work a lot with my body. In it, I guess that you could kind of relate it to like theater, like Broadway, except I'm not that big, not that big of a scale, but a small scale Broadway to film. And so, you know, I've, it, it, I have to figure out how I'm going to portray what I mean by using my surroundings and going to different locations instead of using my body and acting it out. So that was huge. And then I got a lot of feedback from people that I was just too big of a personality, which happens when you entertain kindergartners in person <laughs> for an hour at a time. So that was, I mean, that was a jump too. And I'm also doing older audiences now too. So that was, it was a, it was a double jump in uh, who, who my audience was. So yeah, it, it was difficult, and, and I'm still, I think I'm still finding my stride on video. Um, I was surprisingly actually comfortable in front of a camera. I thought I was going to be more nervous. I still get nervous, but it's definitely different because you don't have that feedback from them. So I just play it all in my head, and I pretend that they're really excited, so then I get even more excited, and yeah, yeah. make believe. <laughs> Has having the Animal Wonders channel had an effect on the Animal Wonders organization? We've gotten a few more local clients because they found us through YouTube or they were part of like the Nerdfighter community 
and then you know they're like we can have jesse come to our house um which is a weird thing but it's cool at the same time so we've gotten a few more clients and we've gotten um quite a few more donations so we've been able to do some projects where, like we were able to rescue a raven and build a whole new enclosure to keep that raven in so that was a huge impact there and i guess really defining our mission and our our point of view our position in the animal caretaking world I guess that's been, I mean, the spotlight's on us now. And so we really, really need to make these positions clear. Yeah. So yeah, it has had an impact. Right. Now we're getting into, I've kind of, for, for a bit, I was kind of avoiding the really hard questions. But then I'm like, you know what? I, this is, I feel like this is my responsibility now to really address these difficult, you know, um, controversial issues. Um, so yeah, I'm a little nervous nerve-wracking I guess it's but uh, I think it's important I think it's, I feel it's my responsibility now yeah. what's the process of taking in a new animal every single case is completely different and I was gonna do a video about this um, it's hard because you know it's such an individual process for each animal um, so we can do the Raven because yeah. he's he's brand new um, so we had no space for a raven. We weren't even imagining that we would take a raven in. Um, I expressed to one of my rehabber friends, she does a raptor rehab, or all bird rehab, basically. She takes them in, fixes them up, and puts them back in the wild, <laughs> if they can go. And um, years ago we were talking about it, and she's like, oh, what would, you know, what animals have you loved working with or would like to work with in the future? And I named a couple, and one of them was a raven. So years later, down the road, she calls me up and said, hey, I have this raven, broken wing, already healed in the wild. It's really skinny. Can't, you know, I've, I've fed it up. Um, he's doing good now, but he cannot be released. Um, and he's really calm. He's, you know, a calm personality. I think he'd make a good education animal. And uh, so we have to wait. Okay. Personally, emotionally, yes, I want a raven. That's so exciting. Um, can we house it? Can we feed it for its entire life? And can we do education with it? Those are the three really important things. Um, I guess the last really important thing is then how is that going to impact the rest of our animals? Because the animals we have now, that's our first priority. We're responsible for them for the rest of their life. That's, that's what we feel. That's what we believe. Um, so we go, okay, um, Let's, let's address all these things. We know how to feed a raven. We've handled and worked with ravens before, so we, we can take it in. Um, can we afford it? That was a different thing. So we had just gotten a bunch of new donations in from um, our new community, and um, we had increased our shows, so we're, we're growing every year. And so we went, you know, we have to build a new enclosure for our hawk anyway. Let's... Um, let's combine this. Let's put the raven and the hawk. Let's build this entire enclosure for both of them and it'll be a win-win and we, you know, we crunched the numbers and we were able to get them. So can we do education with him? That was our last question and that was to be determined. We don't know. So we kind of jumped into that without really knowing the answer to that um, because when you get permits, oh, you also have to get permits for them. Uh, that's no simple little thing but kind of is for us. I don't know because we have all the education and everything like that. Um, so our contacts said that the raven was handleable and, and wasn't really bitey and stuff. So we're like, okay, we're going off that and just crossing our fingers because we are required to do 12 shows a year with an educational animal like a raven. We have to. And we don't want to stress the animal out. So we have to figure out how we're going to do that. So we took him in. We built the enclosure. We went over and, and got the raven. Um, she was keeping him in a a temporary enclosure um, until we could come get him and brought him over in a crate and opened him up opened the crate up and let him run out and uh, then we just work with behavior and assess and assess and interact and form a trust bond and figure out how are we gonna approach this how are we gonna train um, it's been almost two months now and he's taking he finally got a name it took forever for us to name him his name is Rook and uh, he's just now in this week he started taking food from my hand willingly so I just put my hand and he'll take food from it so there's definitely hope I just bought some equipment to have him on my hand we're gonna start working on hand training and then we'll be good to go and we'll get those shows out of the way <laughs> get them done so yeah that's that's that experience it's shorter for like a parrot because we're all set up for a parrot but is it like when you get kind of an exotic animal, do 
you have to do like some a little bit of research before it's like mm -hmm. what exactly mm -hmm. does a cavity eat? Yes, definitely. Yep. For chemo salvia or prehensile head of porcupine, he's probably our most famous guy. Um, I had never worked with one. Um, personally. Um, I had friends and colleagues and, and acquaintances that had worked and I, I've established this network of zoos and other private facilities and vets that work in zoos. Um, and we have one on our board actually and uh, they help us out a lot with nutrition and, and um, vet care and the right kind of habitat and, and temperature and humidity and everything like that just to make sure that yeah we can. There's definitely animals that we cannot house. They're just when they ask, can you take in a hyena, we say, sorry, no. <laughs> can you take an alligator? Nope, not that one either. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about doing what you do? Uh, there, there's, there's so many favorite things that I do. Um, I like cleaning. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's, it's very satisfying to have a dirty space and clean it. And know that, hey, that animal has like a nice, happy little home now. And... They're happy, yay! <laughs> so I like I like the cleaning aspect. Um, I like um, observing the their whole digestive cycle. I guess you know I'm just choosing what types of food to put in them. They're eating it. I get to watch that happen, and then they poop it out, and I get to see, hey, they're healthy, and ha you know. So um, I like that the feeding process as well. Um, I like making the diets. I always try and get creative. It can be colorful. I really like colorful diets for them. Um, I like it. You know, they like it. Um, the education part, probably one of my favorite parts. Um, one of them. They're all my favorite. I don't know. It's hard. So education. So <laughs> just getting in front of people and telling them about what I'm passionate about. It's huge. I mean, I guess that's different in the YouTube world. I don't get to see that happen, but the comments that I get back you know, let me know that they're, they are enjoying this. Um, but seeing the kids in person, that's huge. It's huge. Or teaching them in the summer and then seeing them in the off in, you know, in the winter time or whatever, just passing by and they're like, Hey, it's the animal lady. I know that blue tongue skinks, you know, they have warning colors and they lose their tail, but they can grow it back. They tell me these things I told them and I'm like, that is just the best thing ever. <laughs> um, oh, a great example. Um, Hank Green has a, a quiz show on SciShow, SciShow quiz show, and one of the questions on there was, can turtles feel through their shell? And I had done a video about that about a month ago, and I had commenters saying, on that video, on the quiz show, saying, Jesse taught me that they can feel through their shell. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, stuff I'm passionate about is now taking little seats in their brain and, and it's there and, and it's, it's just amazing. And then, um, I also love the behavior. Animal behavior is, um, probably the thing that just keeps me going. Just, I, I, I wish I could do more of it. I, I mean, I'm surrounded by it every single day. Um, but I wish I, I, I could really do it all day long. Just watching animals and then training animals, teaching them how to communicate this, this awesome community, this, uh, awesome language that, both of us have to learn, and it's neither human language nor the animal's language. It's this in-between language that we, we both get to discover and interact with on that level. It's just incredibly fascinating to me. I love it. We're cool. We're there. We're cool. We're there. What, what can we do with this, though? Exactly. See, and then I get excited. Yeah. I'm like, we got this connection. Okay, where can we go with it? Whew. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting. <laughs> I hate the business part. I, I needed to throw that in there. I think that's fair. I will make sure that it's on there. Do you have any advice for someone who might want to become an educator on YouTube? The biggest advice I'd have for someone w wanting to do education on YouTube is to find your passion because that's what's going to resonate with audience um, and that's how you're going to find followers is you have to be passionate about something um, and let that be seen um, and don't be intimidated by if there is a negative comment. Ignore it. And just keep doing what you're passionate about. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's, I guess that's life advice, too. Just do it. Oh, that's Nike. No, <laughs> no! <laughs> Be somebody! That's Animal Wonder's new slogan. Yay! Yay. <laughs>
I personally think that what Jessie does is amazing. By working with these animals throughout their lifetime and kind of finding a middle ground where she and they can communicate, she helps them become their own ambassadors. Although it didn't make it to interview, once she and I were done talking, she actually brought me behind the scenes and introduced me to all of her zero through eight-legged friends, and it was amazing. This was by far one of the most amazing moments of my life. And it brings to mind a quote by Charles Darwin, From so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being evolved. By the way, that's on display at one of the exhibits at the Field Museum in Chicago. But enough about me, what about you? Can you think of a time in your life where an educator has just hit it out of the ballpark? A time when you walked away in awe, basking in the wonder that derives from a fully stimulated sense of curiosity? Let me know in the comments below or on the social medium of your choice. Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, although nobody ever uses Instagram. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Alright guys, that's all I got. As always, thanks for caring, and I'll see you guys next time. Alright, bye.